Thanks for clicking on this video. This video is the fourth video in a series of new user videos for bidding for the 2126 Affordable Homes Fund. This video is going to look at submitting your offer and your offer lines. My name is Susan Roberts. This video is based on a December 2020 version of IMS. So any changes since then obviously won't be shown in this video. So first of all, the video structure. So the video is aimed at new users to IMS or those with little experience of entering offers and offer lines into to IMS. Um, I am going to assume that you've watched the first three videos or certainly videos one and two. Um, Video three is about inputting an indicative offer line, which some of you may not be intending to do because you're not planning on doing empty homes or hold um, schemes, which are the only ones that you can input as indicative. So the video is going to look at validating and submitting your first offer to Homes England once you've got all those offer lines in the system. And I'm going to look at some common save and validate error messages as, as part of that. I'm then going to go on to end by looking at making changes to submitted offers and submitted offer lines. Um, and I'll also in in both of the the validates and submits, I will look at what you will do later on to do that submit once you have an approved offer in IMS. So I'll try and cover both cases at once. Um, and just as a final I will then get on to look at the other um, videos in the series just as a, a reminder of what was was there in case you want to go back to, to any. So um, any data that you're going to see in IMS has been set up by Homes England for this um, video. It's not live data, so there are no data confidentiality or protection issues with the data that you're going to see in the video. So validating and submitting your first offer to Homes England with common save and validate error messages. So in IMS, I'm going to demonstrate validating and submitting your first offer lines. But obviously I'm aware that although I'm recording this video at the point when no offers have been approved in IMS, over time that will change. So I'm trying to make the video a bit future proof. So I am going to look at how it will differ uh, once you have an approved offer in IMS. So in videos two and three, you saw me saving and validating offer lines. So video two was um, a firm offer line. Video three was indicative offer lines. So when you do not have an approved offer in IMS, then the offer line submit button will be greyed out after you've validated each of your individual offer lines. And the way to actually submit those offer lines is all at once. And you do that by validating and submitting your offer um, in IMS to Homes England. So when you've not got an approved offer in the system, you submit the offer and that submits everything under it. But as I said before, I'm going to cover the process as well later on. So when you do have an approved offer in IMS, when you're in an offer line, once you've validated, you will see that the submit button becomes active. And after validating an offer line, you can submit each individual offer line as you go um, along. Uh, you don't need to do anything at all with the offer. The units, funding and contributions that you have input as part of your offer line will automatically total back into the offer, but you don't need to resubmit the offer or do anything else um, with the offer. So I'm in the offers system um, and I'm first of all going to go into offer, but I will have to go into offer lines um, as well as I, I go to, to look at changes um, once I've I'm in the process of validating and hitting some issues that I know are going to be there. So let's click on offer. 
and then click on the query window that appears. So I've got two offers that are partly set up in the in the system. I've got a 2126 and I've got a SOAP offer. So you can see this is saying the status is new um, and ultimately we're looking for that status to, to change to submitted and then to ultimately to, to approved and allocated. So let me go into the offer. So to go into the offer, I go into second column along and click on the offer name. OK, so two tabs um, there, product summary, which lists my tenures and the contributions that are, that are there. So let's click on submit first. OK, so I've got um, all sorts of error messages appearing here. So let me close um, that. And let me first do what I should have done, which is to validate. So um, I've probably got the same, exactly the same errors here, but first one says, talks about an offer line being invalid. So there are a number of offer lines that are invalid. So let me look at what that might be. So let me click on the error reference to start off with. And that does actually open up my offer line for me. So it says it was invalid. So yes, the data status is invalid. I go to products. Uh, OK, so I can see down here that I've got no total scheme costs, no capital contributions, just funding. If I go into the sub product name. OK, so what I've actually done is I've not added any of the data that was that was under um, there. So that is why this is invalid. I've never validated the offer line, but also there's a load of missing information. So let me click on cancel. And I'm going to come out of cancelling again, closing and cancelling. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the offer lines to start off with. So click on the offer line button. And then OK. Now, what I can see here is that a number of these offer lines um, don't have a tick in the valid comment. That means they haven't been validated. So the other thing I'm now going to show you is how to delete an offer line that you no longer require. So let me open the offer line by clicking on the item I want to in the second column along. OK, so if this is a wrong offer line and um, entered in error, I can click on the delete button. And it will ask me, are you sure? And I'm going to click on yes. And then OK. OK, and you can see now that that offer line has gone. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to repeat that process on the other lines that are invalid um, here that were me um, testing things in the system. So um, I'll do that off screen and then um, come back to offer lines and finally go back to the, the offer to, to validate again. OK, I am back on my offer line screen and you can see now that there are four offer lines that are left and each one has a tick in the valid column. So I'm going to get rid of my offer line window and to do that I go on the bit that says offer line and I'm going to click on the blue door with the red arrow. So I'm now back in offers because I still have the offer window open. Alternative, you might have had to click on the, the button that was that was there. So I'm now going to go back into my offer for. Uh, 2126. And I'm going to try and validate again. Now, there may still be some errors that are within the offer lines that I'll come across as I do this. So this time, because I'd got rid of all the errors on offer lines, there were actually no errors that carried forward to the offer that's that's here. So I'm going to click on the OK button. 
and then I'm going to click on the submit button. So um, there's a confirmation statement for you to, to read. So in total, there are seven statements for you to, to read. Uh, number six being put um, fitted into a number of different points and then a, a comment section for you to add. So let me add some comments in there. So let me click on enter. And what you can now see is that that offer has been submitted in IMS. Um, for the next part of what I'm going to talk um, about, I just want to draw your attention to some um, buttons that have changed, um, both in offers and in offer lines. So at the bottom of the screen, you can no longer save, validate or submit, but you can unsubmit. Okay, so unsubmit gives control back to, to you to, to work on the, the offer and offer lines again. So now I'm going to look at making changes to submitted offers and offer lines. So how you change offer lines in IMS depends on where you are in the process of your offer. So it's a different process now when you're submitting your first offer to when you've got an approved offer in IMS. So when you don't have an approved offer in IMS, you will first need to unsubmit your offer in the system by clicking on undo submit on the offer. And then when you go into an individual offer line, you will see that the fields can be edited again. Um, and you would then go in and make the changes that you want to make. When you finished those changes, you validate the offer line and then go into the offer, validate the offer and submit the offer. So let me show you this in IMS now. So I'm now in the offers system of IMS. The first thing I'm going to do is go into offer lines to show you how the offer lines look at the, the moment. So let me just pick the, the first offer line and products and um, the tenure. And what you'll see is that everything is inactive. I can't click on anything and um, change it. So um, it won't let me actually edit any of those values. And that's what I need to be able to do to change an offer line. So let me click on the cancel button and cancel to come out of it. So I'm now going to go into the offer part of IMS. And click on the OK to bring all my offers up. And I'm going to go into the 2126 offer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the unsubmit button. So it wants some comments. OK, um, so I'm now going to, to cancel. And I'm going to go back to offer lines. First offer line. Um, I'm going to go back into again and what you will see is that now if I want to I can change the title I can change the local authority if I go to products and click on the affordable rent there are boxes again that can be edited on that screen which it couldn't be um, before so you would make your changes on the offer line be it to change the, the title so let me change that title um, and then I can save and I can validate. So validated um, with no errors. And again, you'll notice that the submit button that's next to, to validate on this offer line is greyed out. So I need to go back to the offer and open the offer and validate again. 
validated with no errors, which is exactly what I was expecting, and click on the submit. So we're submitting following changes above. And click on the enter button. And now the status of your offer has changed back to submitted. So once your offer has been approved in IMS, for future offer lines, if you want to make changes to them before they've, they've been approved in IMS, then you'd go into an individual offer line and you'd click on the refer to provider button to take control um, of the line, make the changes, and then um, validate and submit. But this time you do that validate and, su and submit just on the offer line, not on the, the offer because you already have an approved offer. So let me quickly go back to IMS to show you where that refer to provider button is. So back in offer lines, open the first offer line. So you can see here refer to provider. At the moment it's greyed out because we're on first offer, but once your offer has been accepted, any future offer lines that you submit then want to change, you'll be able to click on that button to, to refer them back to yourself to, to make changes um, on there. So a quick reminder of the other videos that are available. So in terms of the 21 at 26 um, bidding videos, they split into two, one set for new users and a separate video for experienced users. So for new users, there are four videos. The first video is about how bidding works in, in IMS, the structure of it and so on, and then partnerships and offers being entered and, and set up in the system. Video two was about inputting a firm offer line and site into IMS. Video three, inputting an indicative offer line into the system. And this video was video four, which is about validating and submitting your 2126 offer in IMS. For experienced users, there's a single video that looks at the differences between bidding for the 1621 programme and bidding for the 21-26 programme.